need you right now. In this moment, I need you right now. Come on, come on. Come on. If it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord. Hallelujah. He brought me through every storm. He brought me through every, every, every wind. Come on. He's a shelter in my rainy places. Come on, I need him. That's what's wrong with us. We need him. We need him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, he's worthy of all the praise and honor and the glory. Come on, he's been better than what we're giving him right now. Come on. Come on, sometimes you gotta shake yourself out of the situation you're in. And the only way you're gonna come out is you gotta learn how to praise God. In spite of what it looks like, what it feels like, you gotta learn how to lift your voice up to the Lord who's able to break you through everything, who's capable of doing anything but failing in your life. Come on, lift your mouth, open your mouth. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, let's touch him this morning. Let's touch him with our words and with our praise. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. we think we should have. But when we realize 
God don't have to do another thing for you and you still owe him? When you learn that, you will begin to praise God in spite of what it looked like and what it felt like. But today is going to be probably one of the shortest messages that I, I think I've ever preached. I'm not going to stay here and try to beat people to praise God. I gave you a chance just a minute ago. People still refuse to give God what's due. You know, when you say open your mouth, it means open your mouth. When you say clap your hand, it means clap your hand. Sometimes people get caught into the who said but instead of what he said so we have to praise God and today there, there is a scripture that we're going to come from today a very familiar scripture I promise you I'm going to be here long I'm not going to make people jump out you had a chance just a few minutes ago I was trying to get you to give your give it to God and you just kind of laid back you know? didn't give it to God but the thing is it's okay it still does not break God's love for you. Isn't that great? His love is not contingent upon what we do. That's what makes me rejoice. Because if it was all about what we do, we wouldn't get nothing. I'm telling you. But it's because of his heart, his mind, what he wanted to do from the beginning. So what you do to not break it, he still loves you. Hmm. When everybody else turn away from you and talk about you, look at you crazy, he still loves you. So today we're going to go to a, a very familiar scripture called John 3, 16. Uh, you can sit out because it's going to be so quick. We're going to leave probably sit out here. All of us are going to be tired. Y'all can be tired.
people are lost because they don't know the fact. They're not looking at the act, and they definitely miss the contract. So the whole thing is to enable for you to get what God has given you is the problem that we have as believers. So he says the whole contract is that whosoever believes shall what? Huh? Not perish, but have everlasting life. Can I tell you the reason why we don't understand this? Because he's talking to the spirit and not the flesh. Most people are still trying to deal with life through the flesh. Most people are still trying to deal with the thing that God has, has given us through the flesh. So what God is dealing with and talking to now is the spirit. The spirit is the only thing that's not going to pay. The spirit is the only thing that's going to have everlasting life. Your flesh is not going to have everlasting life. So the reason why we're not getting to what God, we don't have the truth, so we don't, we don't understand what he said, and the reason why we don't, because we're still acting and dealing with it through the flesh. I'm going to have you today, just stay, just, stay, just stay with me. And this is why when we hear we preach it and we are hollering at people and we're trying to make people get to a place that their flesh won't get. So what happens it behooves me that people are still struggling in the same area of last year and trying to come into this year that said they're going to do something new. But until you get the truth of it, until you understand what the whole plan of it is, you will always struggle in what you're showing others. God loved the world. Listen, talk with me. He loved the world. So it says he didn't care what color you was. He didn't care what house you come out of. He don't care where you was brought up. He so loved the world that he gave. So he said that the whole thing is about it is that we have to be the same as God. We got to begin to give. We don't give nothing. We don't give to others as God has given to you. Because we're still stuck in where we are and what we need instead of what we're supposed to do. So we really haven't got we won't get the everlasting life because we're still in the flesh. Watch this. Watch this here. So he says the contract is that, that whosoever believes it in him shall not perish. Now I want you to see this right here. So as we look at this thing, we realize to believe is more intelligent agreement that Jesus, that Jesus had with God. It's a more intellectual agreement. So what he said, believing is not just saying. Huh? So what we do, we try to say it and make people think that we believe it. But it's more than just saying. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to help you out. So it says, it means to put God, put a total trust in God. To believe, listen to what it means. You can't stand on the edge of your thoughts. You can't stand on the ability that you can do it. But it means to put a confidence, a total trust in God. How can we believe if we don't know it? How can we believe in one that we don't, we don't know how to respond to? So it says it's more than just talking it. It's saying now I'm trusting you with everything. He loved you so much that he gave his only son. His son was the payment for your sin. And we're still beating people and trying to make people believe that they're going to miss it because of sin. If we miss it because of sin, then it means all of us rejected the payment. Only way that you can miss it is that you don't take the payment. So if you got the payment, that means you can't miss it. Okay, I know it's going to get hard because people, people are so used to being rubbed and pushed and, and made feel like this is why the church don't, don't, people don't come to church. Because people see what you do and they believe that you tell them to do something different. The church has empty seats not because people don't believe God or love God. They have, they have empty seats because people don't trust you. Because your actions don't prove that you have the love that God is speaking of. And the 
and dirty and dirty. So what's happening? The church has a problem up, up with the people because the people have a problem with the church. Because we haven't learned the truth. God died for not just the righteous. He died for the sinners. He died for those who were lost. Those who, who, who everybody looked at as if they're not going to make it. That's who God paid the price for. And he loved, he loved you so much that he said, guess what? I'm going to give you my only begotten son. I'm going to give him you because your sin has to be paid. Has to be a payment for your sin. And he was the only one that could do it. But he still did not deny his love for you because of your mistake. And we deny our love toward people because of their mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know it's tough here because people don't want to own up, own up to where they are. Because first of all, if I don't do you like you think I should do you, you're not going to love me like he told you to love me. If I don't say what you think I should say, then now you don't have the respect for me. We lose it because we teach people the, 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 the thing of what we want them to have instead of what he's telling them. He loved the whole world. So he says, regardless of your mistake, regardless of all you've done, he said, I'm going to give you something. That's the act. He did a deed that he would never take back. And watch what he said. Belief is to put our trust in God, to make him charge of, of everything about our life. Believing is both trusting his word as reliable and relying on him for the power to change. If you have never trusted Christ, let this promise of everlasting life be yours and believe. So he says the only way that you're going to have this everlasting life is that you got to believe. Now watch this. This is what messed people up. What else did he tell you to do? What else did he tell you to do? Okay. It's not a trick. He didn't tell you to never believe. <laughs> Everybody looking at the board like it's going to change. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. He said all you have to do is believe. But the belief is in him. He's done everything that your life requires. He's given you the eternal life, but it's not to your flesh, it's to your spirit. Because your flesh is going back to the dust from which it came. But your spirit is going to be raised with him. Huh? Isn't that right? Am I telling you wrong? So all you got to do now in your, in your situation or the place that you are is believe. You believe that his dying wasn't in vain? You believe that what he done, nobody else can do it? And if you can believe that, then guess what? Now you're connected and you may have everlasting life. It's not about your works. Everybody gets mad because nobody wants to do what they're supposed to do. If you love God and you believe him, you will do it. Nobody has to make you do it. If you love God, you will love others. And your love for others will draw people to God. But the reason why we don't is because we have a problem in believing God. The fact is, He loved the world. The act is, he gave his only begotten son. But the contract is, for those who can believe, you will have everlasting life. How many want everlasting life? Well, then what you got to do to have it is that you got to believe what he said. Every word that he spoke. 
God is not a lie. God ain't shall sure lie. Whatever God says, that's what's going to happen. Amen. But all you got to do is believe. You got to have enough in you to trust that whatever God has said is the truth. And you got to know without a shadow of doubt. No matter what other people say, well, hey, let's go on. I'm not going to sit here and try to beat people because you know what? The thing is, people want to jump and shout off from nothing and go home at night. Amen. Yeah. They get emotional. Go ahead. Yes. And if it's not hollering and turning over chairs, they don't think it's church. That's right. That's right. Play for them, baby. Come on. I told you I'm not going to be here alone because the thing is, it's not to try to make you uh, uh, do it. You got to want to do it. And we are in church trying to make people do it. We in church trying to get people to, to jump and haul off of nothing. But if you don't ever get the word, then you might as well sit down because heaven and earth will pass away. And the only thing that's going to remain is his word. So you got to know something. If nobody else say anything else to you, if nobody else get up and make you shout, if no other song has been said, if no other preacher preached, you got to know that God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. And all the thing I got to do is believe that I have eternal life. I got to believe it. I got to believe it for myself. I can't. People can't make me believe it. It's like coming to church and trying to make people praise God. I can't make you praise God. I can't even make you come to church. You got to believe that God has required you to do it. Then you got to just start standing up and doing it. Yeah. 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 If you can believe, if you can believe, and God has given you enough in you to believe, He shows you enough to show you don't have to worry about what people said. You can believe, and if you can stand on that, it will bring you to an eternal place. And I'm talking about some place that he's spoken from the beginning. Because God knew that the flesh was going to act out. Let me show you this here. It's, it's no way that you could tell me a, a God that knows everything that's everywhere and, and can see it and, 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 and no thought before you thought it. Know that you won't go mess up before you got there. But the church will make you believe just because you faltered. Just because you had a mistake. Just because it didn't work the way you thought it was, now you just lost out. You can't lose out, baby. The only way you lose out is you believe what they say. But if you can trust God, if you can muscle up enough to just to believe God, he's already made a promise that cannot be, it can't be wiped out. It can't be taken from you. He didn't tell you to do everything people try to make you do. But he told you that you got to trust and believe in me. Yeah, yeah. You, your confidence has to be in God. Yeah. Can I share something with you? Just yesterday, Friday, I had a $316 black bill for my house. For my house. Our black bill has never been that high since the time we've been in that house. The church has one here higher than it. We never had a light bill that high. But the thing was, the enemy was trying to get me to doubt God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you see what it is compared to what you got, it looked like you were in an insufficient place. Y'all can tell me what you want about it. I'm just going to be real with you. I don't care how long you study. I don't care what you say you know God. There's a kind called test. And in testing time, it will prove if you're going to stand rooted or you're going to be uprooted. But when you see the effects of what's been happening, it's hard sometimes to put the confidence where it's supposed to be. We can holler, we can scream, we can praise God and come here until our wigs fall off, to our trial. We fall out until we lose our teeth. But the truth of that is, are you still going to trust God when it seems like there's not going to be a way to get through? So, what I 
for the whole week. For some of you who can't count. I only made $30 for the whole week. But you know, we got everybody who's connected to you, everybody who knows you, but nobody can feel or discern that you're in a place. And they haul and scream and shout all around you and praise God, but you're here struggling, they don't even know, not even your leaders. And so now you're at a place where you have no nothing else to do but trust God. I know Sister Valerie knows because she, she go back and do my time. She can make sure that this I want to help you. But what I'm trying to tell you, when it seems like what you have don't match what you need. Who am I talking to? I know somebody, you're there right now. You, you're at a place where you, you, you're getting in, but you're getting in is not enough to cover what you they spent. Kind of like a woman who had just a little meal. Go ahead. To go she only had enough for her and her son and they were going to die. But guess what? When she gave to the man of God. Can I tell you, it may look like you're at the bottom of everything, but when you give to God, yes. he supplies whatever left your hand so he says, I said, God's going to make a way. Come on, I said, God's going to make a way. I'm at the car wash and praying to God, and I can start this. And this, this is the thing the Lord has been giving me. Every morning I get up, I, get up, I say the prayer. Our Father, mm -hmm. which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom. Yes, sir. Thou will be in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not, Lord, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king, the power and the glory. And I begin to say that. And I'm telling you something. Heaven opened up for me. 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 Can I tell you why he did it? Not because I'm so special, but because of his love. That's why I want you to know it doesn't matter how far they push you out or what they say about you. He loved the world. He loved the whole world. That's you, me, and everybody else. God has an agape love. Yes. Yes. That means it doesn't matter how messed up you think you are, he still loves you. Yeah. Don't care how many times you fail, he still loves you. Yeah. He said a just man falls seven times. But guess what? He gets back up. Because God loves you. And if you could just believe it, church, if you could just believe it, I'm telling you, you could have everlasting life. I'm talking about life that goes beyond the imagination of people and their thoughts. You can have a life that's full of abundance and, and blessing that God has already established for you. But you got to believe that contract. And when God sets a contract, nothing breaks it. Why? Because God knew that you were going to fail before you failed. Your spirit is broken, you begin to operate in your flesh. That's right. Amen. 
And that's why we don't see God moving because your flesh will not see him. His contract is still for you, but your flesh cannot receive it because it's operating. And if you stop operating in your flesh and believe what he said, I promise you today eternal life is his word. God cannot go back on his word. That's right. Whatever he said, that's where it's going to be. But God brought me through this week in spring color. He brought me through in spring color. It's like I did not even lose what I let go. It's like I did not even lose what I let go. Why I'm saying that? Because somebody holding something that you got to let go. I don't know why. I, I just shouldn't in my spirit. I'm saying this because somebody's holding something yeah. that you got to let go. Yeah. What is that so precious for you that you can't live for? Mm. What is it so precious for you that you're scared to lay at his feet? Mm. What is so precious that you're holding? Somebody's holding it today. Mm. I know I'm, I know I'm in the right place. Yeah. You don't like, I know. I don't have to have anybody to tell me, but the Holy Spirit let me know. You are in here today and you're holding it. It's wrong. Because where your heart is, that's right. where your treasure is. That's right. That's right. Where your heart is. Who am I talking to? Come, come. We're going to go home. You're holding something. God wants you to come and bring it to Him today. Because He loved you so much. He loved you so much. He said when he looked out, he saw you. In spite of all the other people that were around you, he looked at you. Because he loved you. He gave his son for you. He allowed his son to take your sin payment and he gives you the righteous payment. That's why we live. We live through him. And we get confused because we say, we are messed up. But guess what? I am still the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. It's hard to get sometimes when you've been taught so different, when you've been taught so backwards, and people always made you feel like you messed up and you can't get back up. You, it, 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 and that stuff goes with you. It comes from child because we learned that as a child. You know, when you messed up, you will never be nothing. We learned that kind of stuff, and now we live with it. But I'm telling you, God's trying to change your life. Yes. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We're getting ready to go. Those are the churches over. But I know that it was somebody I was talking to. I need you to come. Come on, don't, 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 don't be, don't be slowful. Come on, move, move, move. Come to this altar. I need to pray with you.